Realty income. Oh man, what are we gonna do with you? Welcome back to Strongman Personal Finance. I always hear about this real estate investment trust called Realty Income Corporation, ticker symbol O. It's so popular in the dividend community. And when I was doing research, I quickly figured out why. Number one, the stock went up a little bit during the right after the pandemic, so you got some price appreciation. And it's got a 5.62 dividend yield, and it has monthly dividends. So when you think about a dividend investor, you know, like, oh, passive income, you know, dividend growth, the stock goes up, I get monthly dividends. I can't go wrong. But now there seem to be some major issues going on here. As a matter of fact, over the past year, the stock is down 14.59%. Now, I'm not exactly sure why it could be rising interest rates. Think about it. Rising interest rates that cost the company more to borrow money to acquire properties. Other assets are potentially more attractive, like short-term treasuries, which are probably yielding roughly the same as the dividend this is paying. There's a, There could be a lot of reasons that the stock is dropping. I'm not 100% sure why. But... I've seen on the dividend community that there are some concerns because how retail always works is when a stock goes up, they love it, they buy it. It's amazing. It's the future, bro. And then when the stock starts to go down, they start to crap their pants. So I was on our dividends and I saw this. Oh, my eyes are bleeding, staying the course because I believe in them, their model and their fundamentals. But holy, you know what? It almost seems... Like, oh, which was such a big thing. Oh, just buy oh, bro. Just buy bro, bro. Just buy oh. Just buy oh, bro. All of a sudden, oh, seems to be falling in popularity. <laughs> the same thing with Shada. I love seeing this. <laughs> now, let me give you some sage advice. Number one, you should not put a lot of your money into an individual stock because you're taking a lot of risks. Individual stocks can go up a lot. They can also go down a lot. Usually, index funds, while they can drop a lot too, they're probably not going to go to zero, especially a total world index. And you're less likely to be shooken out of an index because when you think about an individual stock, I mean, if something goes wrong or there's some you know, unexpected risk that materializes, a companies can go bankrupt. They can go to zero. They can go away. That doesn't happen with an index. If a company goes to zero, it just gets dropped out in the index and they add whatever new stock gets added to the exchange or whatever index that, that index is tracking. That is one of the big benefits of buying an index. And it's just, it's, it's hilarious to me to see this happen over and over again. There's all these popular stocks on our dividends, on Wall Street Bets, on YouTube. They go up, people love them, people buy them. And then the stock drops and all of a sudden they're crap in their pants and you know what's going to happen to a lot of O investors? Guess what? They're probably going to eventually sell the stonk if it keeps going down. <laughs> Good job, though. You know, you, you bought it because it went up and it had monthly dividends, and now you're going to sell it. So what is this REIT all about? It's actually like, I mean, it's interesting. Basically, what they do is they have these things called triple net leases where they make the tenant, the person that's actually, or the corporation that's actually renting the property, they pay the taxes, the tenant does, the taxes, the maintenance, insurance, all that stuff. That's all incorporated in the lease. And I've actually seen this at work where we have, uh, now that I see this, I know it's, we have triple net leases. But basically, a, a lot of the, the costs are passed on to the tenant. And the, the portfolio of this company is pretty intriguing. So they don't they don't give money to DGENs, okay? They don't they don't lease out to DGENs. You can see here, you know, it's mostly in the United States, and they've got you know some properties in the Willy Wonka land, and they've got some properties in Spain and Spain, and they got some properties in Italy, but vast majority in the United States. Their portfolio is obviously pretty conservative. They they, they rent to mostly commercial or entities. Looks like all commercial entities. These are businesses that you know probably won't go out of business that are probably going to pay their rent all time, and that they can sign long-term leases with. So, for example, they leased a Dollar General. I think the weighted average uh, uh, lease term for their portfolio is like 10 years. So these are long-term leases where a lot of the costs are passed on to the tenant, which is pretty good, okay? 
Dollar General, Walgreens, Dollar Tree, 7-Eleven. I mean, obviously, we all know these are all big name companies. These aren't like clowns like in the you know U.S. financial crisis where we gave out mortgages to people that couldn't pay them. These are, <laughs> well, this is funny. You've got AMC down here. That's pretty hilarious. But overall, I, the, the portfolio seems pretty solid. Now, let's go ahead and just look at some stuff. So the first thing I noticed is obviously we know the stock has dropped pretty significantly. It could be because of macro. I heard they you know, purchased either part of the Bellagio, which is a casino in Vegas. I've actually been there. They, they had some kind of investment in there. Maybe that's you know part of the reason the stock's dropping. But overall, if you look at it from a valuation standpoint, I mean, it's the P's as low as it's ever been since at least 2020. Price to books is trading extremely cheap compared to the past. Price to free cash flow, yes, they have negative free cash flow. They do a lot of acquisitions, is pretty low. And price to operating cash flow is low. Basically, the, the company's very, very, very cheap from a historical standpoint. But there's more to it than that, okay? We go look at income. So obviously their revenue has massively exploded. It's probably a combination of a lot of acquisitions and inflation going up. But their revenue has massively exploded, which is probably why the stock price went up in the last couple of years. We go down and we look at earnings per share. It's basically flat. We look at free cash flow per share. It's negative, but like I said, they're doing a lot of acquisitions. The dividend per share, the monthly dividend, it keeps going up and up and up and up, which is attractive, okay? Operating margins are very high, but they're trending down. And profit margin is, you know, they're pretty, they have pretty high profit margins, but they're also trending down. If we go look at their cash flow, we could see, wow, operating cash flow has massively increased. Where does that come from? Well, they're going on a buying frenzy. Okay, look at the amount of capital expenditures that they've done in the last couple of years. They went absolutely bananas starting in 2020 and even going into late 2022. They've been buying like freaking crazy, okay? How do they finance these? Well, it's a combination of share issuance and debt issuance. So I guess the company's management has determined that issuing shares is a has a lower cost of capital than issuing debt. You can see the most recent quarter, they had $2 billion of shares issued, $2 billion, compared to $633 million of debt, $798 million versus 662, or $2.15 billion versus $1.3 billion, et cetera, et cetera. They've mostly relied, it looks like, on debt, or sorry, correction, uh, share issuance to raise capital to acquire properties. Not the worst thing in the world, but you just have to pay attention to your free cash flow per share and your dividend per share. Because what management has to do is they have to say, okay, you know, we, we have to pay these dividends. People expect us to pay these dividends. They expected the dividend per share to rise. How much is it going to cost us to issue shares? How much in future dividends are we going to have to pay versus the future interest we're going to have to pay? Where they're going to go from here, I'm not quite sure. We know interest rates have gone up. And we know the stock price have gone down. So they're going to have to do their own internal math to kind of figure out what's the best way to proceed. Because when your stock price goes down, you can't raise as much money from issuing shares. And when interest rates go up, the cost of debt goes up. And that also, you know, is something to consider in their evaluations. But overall, I mean, the company seems pretty solid. I was looking at their balance sheet. I had it somewhere up up here. I was looking at their balance sheet overall. And they, they have a pretty solid balance sheet. I mean, they're, they're able to raise tons of money. You know, uh, I don't think they're going bankrupt anytime soon. Let's see. Let's see their long-term assets. So they have land and buildings. They have $446 billion of book value of, of real estate. Mostly newer properties. We can see they don't have a lot of accumulated depreciation. Overall, you know, you look, I, I don't see any major issues. Their debt, they don't have a ton of debt relative to their fixed assets because they issue a lot of shares. <laughs> That's how they do it. Overall, like this is not the worst thing in the world. I'm not against this stock, and it's obviously it's cheaper now than what it was before. But there's there's a lot going on, and you, you can't just like buy a stock because oh the dividend's really good, and oh look at the yield. Because all of a sudden you can see your stock drop, and then you get all the clowns on our dividends. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna buy a dividend ETF, I would say just buy Shadda instead of buying O. <laughs> Why take the risk of O? 
you know, one freaking company when you can buy Shada. That that's just my personal opinion. But overall, I mean, this is not the worst thing in the world. I, I can see why this is attractive to people. It's very conservative. You know, they lease long term leases to very dependable tenants. This isn't a DGEN portfolio. But yeah, that's kind of my thoughts. I just wanted to laugh at the retail clowns. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. Cheers. Check out the pinned comment below and join our Discord community where you can ask me questions directly via text. And if you sign up for the highest tier, you can actually meet me in person every two weeks. So check out the pinned comment, join the Discord community, and let's make some money.